Engineers have tested a new robot built to probe the damaged number two reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The remote controlled device is about 50 centimeters long and shaped like a scorpion. It runs on a rail and is fitted with front and rear cameras. Managers at Tokyo Electric Power Company plan to insert the robot into the containment vessel of the reactor. Engineers expect the machine to move directly underneath the reactor to capture images of molten nuclear fuel. Once we can confirm where the fuel is located, we can start to think about how to remove the debris. TEPCO plans to implement the device as early as this summer. That's if all goes well. Engineers still fear narrow parts of the rail and obstacles may hamper the job. Company officials say they'll operate the probe carefully by measuring radioactivity as they go. They say radiation levels inside the number two containment vessel are still high. They say the robot is designed to withstand up to 1,000 sieverts of radiation. Police say a man has shown up at a police station in central Japan claiming that he was involved in the drone incident in Tokyo. Earlier this week, the device was discovered on the roof of the prime minister's office. The man appeared at a police station in Fukui Prefecture late Friday. He's in his 40s. Police are now trying to confirm whether he was actually involved in the incident. The unmanned aircraft was carrying a plastic bottle containing traces of radioactive cesium. Engineers with the company that produced the drone have been examining the equipment fitted to the device. They say it was likely flown by someone who had considerable knowledge and experience. They say high definition a high-definition footage from the camera could be sent up to 1.2 kilometers using a transmitter. The engineers demonstrated a flight using a similar system. They say attaching the extra devices would make it more difficult to operate. The color of the machine was changed to black from its original white. They say it was probably to make it not stand out during a night flight. Someone must have dismantled it, painted each part and assembled them. It needs wiring to attach extra devices and it needs software to make them function. Members of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party met to discuss ways to regulate drone flights over key government facilities. We should not think light of the incident in terms of crisis management in our country, especially when we need to step up our security for the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics. Lawmakers plan to submit a bill to the current session of Parliament. Authorities are following another lead. Forensic experts are analyzing the material found in the container. Radioactive cesium is produced in nuclear reactors. They're trying to find out where the substance Japanese comes from. Japanese police have arrested a man they suspect landed a drone on the Prime Minister's office. Investigators have been analyzing the man's blog in which he described landing the device. The drone was found on the roof on Wednesday. A 40-year-old man named Yasuo Yamamoto claimed responsibility. He turned himself in on Friday at a police station in central Japan. He said his actions had been an anti-nuclear protest. The drone was carrying a plastic bottle containing traces of radioactive cesium. Investigators studying Yamamoto's blog say he attempted to fly the drone early in the morning on April 8th but gave up because of bad weather. He said he then operated the craft from a car park before sunrise the next day. He wrote that due to darkness and electro electrical interference, he lost sight of the craft. He then left the car park. He wrote that as part of his protest, he put contaminated soil from Fukushima in the container attached to the drone. Images of the device on the blog appear similar to the drone found on the building roof. He wrote he had planned to target the Prime Minister's office since autumn last year. The number of foreign tourists to Japan hit a record high in March due to the weaker yen and the cherry blossom season. Officials of the Japan National Tourism Organization say more than 1.5 million people visited Japan in March. 
That's up about 45 percent from a year earlier. The number of visitors was the highest for a single month since the survey began in 1964. The number of tourists from mainland China rose more than 83 percent to about 338,000. Tourists from Taiwan rose about 33 percent to nearly 278,000. Visitors from Hong Kong, the U.S. and Britain also set record highs. Tourism officials predict figures for April will post another high due mainly to the Easter holiday. Officials of Japan's industry ministry are trying to figure out the best mix of power sources to meet future energy needs. They've compiled a draft plan for the year 2030. It calls for reducing dependence on nuclear power to lower levels than before the Fukushima accidents. The ministry assembled a team of experts to discuss a plan. They've been holding meetings since January. The draft says nuclear power should make up between 20 and 22 percent of Japan's total energy supply. The figure was 28 percent before the 2011 nuclear accident. Japan's dependence on thermal power has risen since then, as all nuclear reactors are offline. That's driven up fuel costs. Ministry officials decided that nuclear power is necessary to bring down prices and cut greenhouse gas emissions. The plan calls for more than doubling the percentage of energy that comes from renewable sources. Green energy accounted for a little over 10 percent of the supply in fiscal 2013. The draft suggests lifting that to between 22 and 24 percent. That means power from renewable sources would exceed that from nuclear energy. The ministry plans to present its draft plan to the experts on Tuesday next week. Japan's nuclear regulators continue to take steps to restart the reactors at a power plant in central Japan. They say their work will not be affected by a recent court decision blocking a restart. Officials of the Nuclear Regulation Agency met on Thursday to review progress at the number three and four reactors at Kansai Electric Power Company's Takahama plant in Fukui Prefecture. The meeting is the first about the reactors since a district court issued a provisional injunction earlier this month. Kansai Electric officials told the regulators that they will later explain the details of new facilities which are necessary for restarting the reactors. Measures reviewed at the meeting include an earthquake-resistant seawall and a facility to serve as a base for recovery efforts in the event of an accident. The regulators accepted the utility's explanation. NRA officials say they will proceed with what screenings and inspections they can perform while the injunction is in effect. In February, inspectors confirmed that the reactors met new regulations introduced after the 2011 Fukushima accident. But the operator cannot bring the reactors back online unless the court decision is overturned. Nuclear regulators now say the injunction will not affect administrative procedures regarding the reactors. Meanwhile, officials with Kyushu Electric Power in southern Japan now say they're planning to restart the number one reactor at the Sendai plant in mid-July. They had previously said early July. They submitted the new schedule to the NRA on Thursday. Regulators began inspecting the number one reactor last month in preparation for the restart, but the process has fallen behind schedule. Power company officials have told regulators that they do not have all the necessary documentation. And there could be a further delay. Regulators told Kyushu Electric Power that the new inspection schedule seems unrealistic. Officials with the utility said they will reconsider it. Residents nearby had tried to prevent the restart, but a district court this week dismissed their request. All of Japan's nuclear reactors are currently offline. Utilities must meet new regulations introduced after the 2011 Fukushima accident in order to restart them. North Korea's top military officer has denounced joint U.S. and South Korean drills. He threatened to respond by launching a nuclear attack. Chief of the General Staff of the Korean People's Army, Ri Yong-gil, spoke the day before the Army's anniversary. He said drills that U.S. and South Korean troops had held for nearly two months were a threat of a nuclear attack. He threatened North Korea would respond with a nuclear attack. He said his country would destroy its enemies if a single spark fell on its soil. U.S. and South Korean forces are on high alert. They fear the North Koreans could mark their army's anniversary by firing a missile. A group of Japanese atomic bomb survivors is on their way to the U.N. headquarters to deliver an important message. They'll appeal for the elimination of nuclear weapons. 
Representatives of the Japan Confederation of Atomic and Hydrogen Bomb Sufferers Organizations left from an airport near Tokyo. Their visit coincides with the conference that gets underway on Monday in New York to review the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. They plan to share their experiences with delegates. And they'll also hold an exhibition displaying atomic bomb-related photos. 90-year-old Masakazu Saito from northern Japan is part of the group. He says it's important for people to understand the suffering the 1945 atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused. I want to tell world leaders that they should never intend to use atomic bombs in wars. Saito was exposed to radiation 1.8 kilometers from ground zero in Hiroshima. He was serving in the now defunct Imperial Japanese Army at that time. The season has come and just about gone in most of Japan for this year. As always, they paved the way to spring. The blossoms have also become symbols of post-war reconciliation, thanks in great part to the work of a man who grows them and then sends them abroad. Cherry blossoms make almost any place look more cheery. This variety has been named Yoko, sunshine, in hopes that it will shine on people like the sun. <laughs> the pink blossoms make a striking contrast with the blue sky. Terumi Takaoka sends Yoko cherry trees around the world. His father created the strain to express his wish for peace. Yoko trees have been delivered to more than 10 countries and regions. Many of them were the sites of fierce battles in the mid-20th century. Vietnam is one such place where people died as Japanese troops moved in. About 7,000 Yoko cherry trees have been planted along the main street of the capital, Hanoi. They can be found in front of the Japanese embassy, at schoolyards, and other locales. People say that Yoko have become symbols of peace now that we've been promoting that message for many years. I'm very happy about this. Takaoka's father, Masaaki, died 14 years ago. Masaaki taught agriculture at a vocational school during wartime. When his students left to go to battle, he pointed to a cherry tree and told them to come back to that spot. Many never did. The war situation grew worse for Japan. Masaaki received reports of the deaths of the young men he had known. My father said he told them to come back to the cherry tree, but more than half of them died. He said he was very sorry. Masaaki got the idea of creating a new variety of cherry tree that would bloom in any climate to mourn for his students. He collected more than 200 kinds and worked on cross-fertilizing them for 30 years. What worked was a combination of the Taiwan cherry and the Amagi Yoshino type. Taiwan cherry withstands hot weather. Its blossoms are bright pink. Amagi Yoshino puts up with sea breezes and cold. Its flowers are large and white. Yoko was born of that parentage. Masaki sent more than 50,000 trees to the countries where his students had died, including China, South Korea, and the Philippines. After his death, Takaoka took over the project. He's been sending 3,000 seedlings around the world each year. This year, the 70th anniversary of the end of the war, Yoko is making its way to Myanmar for the first time. The temple in the Japanese city of Matsuyama is dedicated to soldiers from the area who died in Myanmar. 8,000 were sent to war from Ehime Prefecture. More than 5,500 never returned. A thousand trees will be sent to Yangon, where fierce battles were fought. My father kept sending trees until he died. I want to continue what he started. It's a project that will last my entire life. 
Yoko has been carrying prayers for peace around the world. Each year, as the flowers bloom, the prayers are heard loud and clear. <laughs> 